Howdy, y'all. It's time for another podcast. How you doing, JJ? I'm doing fine. So, what are we doing today? Well, because we didn't make a separate video on it, we're gonna review Backlash. That's correct. And we're also gonna talk Hearthstone, because that's kind of all we do. That's, uh, yeah, basically. And uh, we're playing a little game. Playing a little game that we played before, but, hey, can never get enough of that game. It's gonna be exactly. who am I? It's gonna be in, in the halftime show, but that doesn't concern us right I mean, now, we don't so. really need to go too in-depth on what no, we're doing, because yeah. there's a sidebar that shows what we're doing. And when we're doing it. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh... We only got around to watching WWE Backlash a few days after it aired. Yes. And at that time when we got done watching, honestly, didn't feel like recording a review yeah, at that point. Because first of all, it wasn't that great. And second of all, it was really late. It was late and we had college and stuff, so got to get up in the morning. Well, so, you did, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that wasn't going to happen. So we're doing it now. Yeah. First match. Uh, pre-show match. Yeah, that one... That kind of happened. Yeah. That's it was just kind of there. Yeah. Uh, Ruby Riot and Bailey, And Ruby won in 10 minutes. There's really not anything Which to say about Which is all this. you need to say about this. Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan. They were yeah. They were there. Uh, Ruby. Yeah. Uh, hope she can win something at some point. I like the long hair. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. I like it better than her old hairstyle. Uh, Bailey. Uh, yeah. Turn heel. Yeah, that's definitely do something that needs to happen. Just, yeah. Um, main show, though. Yeah, and here is... Starting off the main show. Probably the match of the night. With the best match of the day. Uh, for some also the second longest. Oh, yeah. Uh, Seth Rollins, the Intercontinental Champion going into this match, and also out of it, defeated The Miz. Oh, the Miz. And that was, a, that was a hell of a good match. Uh, Rollins, that was a lot of near falls. Yeah. And Rollins kicked out a Two skull crushing finales, I want to say. Yes, that was um, like there was some good moments in there that actually had you believe. Yeah. So, um, what I said about this match, which I thought was really great, is that for a second there, I totally believed that Miz might yeah, actually win that. Exactly. Which, which, yeah, it doesn't happen that much in wrestling that you're actually like if yeah. you're if you're like oh yeah, of course that person's gonna win. Yeah. And then you're not like oh my god, there's a near fall. Maybe they're not winning, but yeah. this match made me believe. It's either it's obvious from the beginning to end who's winning, or it's obvious up until just the end, of, and there's surprise out of nowhere, like a Lesnar at Mania, right? Yeah. So during Whoa. the Lesnar-Roman match, there, like during the match, there was no point who was honestly believing Lesnar might win. Yeah. Right? And in Miz Rollins? Oh, that was moments. Even though yeah. I also believe, but in that case, it's like you go in there and you're not sure anyway. Like, both of these could reasonably happen. Yeah, but I was definitely strongly leaning towards Rollins. Yeah. Uh, before the match, of course, after, because, it, because it happened. You know, I knew the result. But during the match, I was like, oh, maybe Miz is winning this exactly. back. So, you have the match. And uh, Miz actually delivered by himself. Along yeah. with, with Rollins. So, they... I mean, it's a solid, probably four-star match. At this point, we could probably look that up. Yeah, we could. I'm. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and Google for that. I was uh, about to say we can talk about that after we're done with the card. We can look yeah, at the match. Exactly. So stars and just mention the next match. Um, uh, the Raw Women's Championship match. Uh, Nia defects. Uh, Nia Jax, the champion, yeah. defeated. I I got ahead of myself there. Yep. Alexa Bliss. <laughs> uh, which is good that way, by the way. Yeah, I mean, there is no way in hell that. They can make an Alexa Bliss win over Nia Jax seem believable, I feel. Even though they did it before. Yeah, and they definitely, this match seemed more even than it, than it maybe needed to be. Yeah, but in if but, it's just a ragdoll match. Yeah. It, like, you gotta, you gotta give some credibility to Alexa, right? That's true. So, um, yeah, again, the match didn't make anyone look too weak. It had the predictable outcome. This is one of those where I feel like there's not too much to say about you it. You specifically complained about uh, Naya always trying to put up the some more, more oh, yeah. on the rope. That when in the end it turned out it wasn't even necessary. Because it's like she tried it once, Alexa got out of it. Fair. Yeah. She tried it again and she got out of it again. It's like stop trying, okay? You know that it's a big power move even when you're not exactly. doing it from the ropes. Just hit her twice 
outside of the ropes, it makes okay. more sense. I found the star ratings, and uh, I'm just going to mention them whenever we talk about the match. So, Fair. Ruby Ride versus Bailey, 1.5 stars. Yeah. Rollins versus... The, oh, this is Meltzer, by the way. Yeah. Right, uh, Rollins versus Miz, 4.25 stars. Yeah, seems accurate. Hey, the man agrees with us. So, uh, Naya versus Alexa, 1.25 stars. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it wasn't anything eh, special. Not really. But uh, that seems pretty low. Um, yeah, it wasn't that good of a match. But, yeah. Uh, the next match was Jeff Hardy versus yes. Randy Orton, uh, United States Championship. And um, did, we, did we both predict Orton or did we predict Hardy? I think we both predicted Hardy. Which is how it happened, which is good. Because I like Hardy a lot better as U.S. champion. Yeah, definitely. Than Randy Orton. Orton has... As a matter of fact, I like almost everyone better as U.S. champion. Yeah, he's done, he's done quite a bit already. So, it was a pretty good match because Jeff, like, even now with Orton not having a title, getting a clean win over him is a pretty big push. Like, that's a pretty good thing for Jeff Hardy to do. That's true. Then again, when, whenever you beat a name like Orton, depend, no, that's Jeff not, Hardy's also a big name and a fan yeah. favorite, so... Right. Uh, is with Orton, it's not quite like Cena yet, but it's uh, it's up there. I mean, for a while they were basically the same when yeah. it came to they were trading wins for a while there. Yeah. They were having feuds and everything, so they should feasibly be yeah. on the same level. So Orton is kind of also one of the legends being killed by now, ironically. Yeah, ironically because he killer. used to be the legend killer, but not really anymore when you when you legend yourself. So defeating Orton, it's it's a big name. Yeah. So that's never bad for Jeff. Uh, As a matter of fact, if we're looking at their careers, besides the actual number of championship titles, yeah. I feel Orton probably would deserve his rank as a legend more than Cena. More than Cena? Yeah. No. Again, again like Cena, Cena has more championship titles, yes. Yeah. Besides that? Man, it's John Cena. That's, he's the guy. He's the, he's the dude. Like, Orton? Oh, no. I mean, Orton is a legend. But it, John Cena. Anyways. It's just uh, everything about Cena. He's, he's a legend. Star rating of Meltzer. I'm looking oh, it yeah, up. Right. For uh, Hardy and Orton. Uh, 2.25 stars. Not that great, apparently. It didn't, yeah, I mean. D- didn't love it. Liked it, didn't love it. So 2.5. Uh, the pay-per-view was generally pretty weak. And Rollins yes. versus The Miz was the... Also, in a Meltzer's opinion, Meltzer's opinion, the best match of the card. I mean, it's pretty rather clear. Match, there yeah. is one match that might come close, but besides yeah, that. But we'll get to that. Uh, also, next up, the shortest match on the card. Interestingly. Daniel Bryan versus Big Cass. Oh. I mean, singles match, no stipulation, no nothing. Yeah, exactly. No titles. Big no future opportunities. Cass kind of looked weak there. Yeah, so... Because Daniel Bryan strangled him in eight minutes. Yeah, I, so I predicted um, Big Cass. The result was Daniel Bryan. Yeah, that's also what I picked, I believe. Yeah, you you made the whole point about uh, Big Bryan. Cass not losing singles matches, yeah. especially against, you know, really short guys. <laughs> Wait, I said Bryan, right? I said Bryan would win. Did you? Think so. You definitely made the point about. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mentioned that that it barely ever happens, but I, I don't even know what I think to be honest. But so basically, what our point is, if Brian you want to know sense. what we predicted, go watch yeah. watch the last podcast mm-hmm. because we did predict it. We did. We never miss a prediction. That's also probably a lie. Yeah, that is definitely a lie. Um. So Brian just squashed him. So apparently, they're trying to push Brian, even though Brian lost on uh, SmackDown, right? Yeah, he lost to Rusev. To Rusev. Maybe he, maybe they got something. Of course he did. Yeah, maybe they got something bigger planned for him. DB. Maybe he's taking on AJ. So maybe. Oh god, do we want to talk about the next match? Do we want to talk star ratings first? Star rating. Daniel, I'm just for the next match. I'm just gonna mention the star rating, but also for Daniel Bryan versus Big Cass, two stars. Let me tell you the star rating for Charlotte Flair versus Carmella. One star. Fair. Which is probably... Seems pretty high. Which is probably one and a half stars too many. (laughs) Solely because of the outcome. How, Sway? How? 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 How How does Carmel... How does Mela be Charlotte? Like, I I, I wouldn't have been 
hugely surprised if it turned out that she retained the title by way of countouts, DQ, whatever. It's crazy. But she beat a her. win. She defeated Charlotte. That seems a bit extreme. Who does that? What? What? Who, who does that? What? Vince, what's your problem? Seriously. Carmella? Carmella. Car- you know how she got that money in the bank briefcase to begin with? James Ellsworth. Jimmy James Ellsworth. You know, do you know by any chance who, Ch- who Charlotte Flair is? Uh, I believe I've heard the name for you. Yeah, Charlotte Flair. Carmella, really. Next match. Um. So. Yeah. Um, uh huh. <laughs> I want to call this a breakfast match. Kinda. Because there was a lot of scrambled eggs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, no. I thought <laughs> you were setting up for a Tiffany joke. Somewhere. I I couldn't point out where it would have been, but <laughs> that that's you. That's typically what what we've gone for recently with breakfast. Yeah. No. Uh. But yeah. That. Oh God. AJ this, and Nakamura. This match, it wasn't horrible. It was a good match. It was a good match. Again, this is the one match that maybe might be a contender for yeah. uh, the match of the night, although I think that Seth Rollins versus Miz definitely Miz. was better. Specifically because also of the finish. And yeah, this match... It was a clean finish, so this one was... Had... A lot of, a two lot of, or three low blows each? Like, yeah. Dick Kick City. Uh, they were slamming each other in the nuts. Whenever they could. And it ended in no contest. Also, because it's a no DQ. Match. Let me quickly. I was about to say, mention that it's not no DQ match because. So yeah, of course. That seems uh, important. In the end, there was just they were both down in the ring for ten seconds, and the ref just called it off. And either they're becoming a Sheamus and Cesaro kind of tag team because that's what happened last time. So that seems like that. very unlikely. Or they're trying to for this. two reasons. Yeah. First of all, AJ is the champion. Yep. Like the WWE mm-hmm. champion. And second of all, Shinsuke just freshly turned heel. On AJ. On AJ. Yeah. That, that, that doesn't seem likely. Oh, unlikely. Like, the Shamus and Cesaro team, it was like, Shamus was a heel for a long time, yeah. Cesaro was a face for a long time, yeah. and they had that feud. Exactly. And then they became a They team. didn't turn on each other or anything. No, that's true. Not yet. So, uh, yeah, I'd say that's unlikely. Uh, more probable, they want to milk this match up more. So they want to have probably a couple more matches. I mean, I can, I can see why. It's a, it's supposed to be a good matchup, and they can whenever they want to, they can pull the trigger and, and have, let them have a five star match. Yeah, hopefully they'll do it. SummerSlam, like, mm. like something to. Yeah, remember? I mean, it, it seems a bit too extreme to draw it out till Mania. Didn't do it at Mania, so maybe at SummerSlam. And yeah, SummerSlam seems probable. It's about time for a new five star match in the main roster. The, I the clock's still ticking. I could see that whatever. Their blow off will be will still only getting like four and a half or four point seven five or something. But if they're if they're really gonna if they're really gonna be allowed to I do mean, it, the Wrestle Kingdom match didn't get five stars either. Yeah, but they could do it. And it was Japan, and they they right. making five star matches happen yeah. left and right. The thing is, they could do it. They yeah they, they I'm absolutely could do it. Yeah, I believe they're capable of doing it. If anyone can do it, then those two can definitely do it. But this one, yeah, uh, three and three point two five stars for Meltzer. He probably took some degree of a star off because of the finish. Also, awesome. the longest match on the card. Yeah, by about a bunch of seconds. Uh, count of the time they were just lying on the floor, not doing nothing. Yeah. You know, uh, bell to bell, yes, but time of actually filled with action, probably Rollins and Miss anyway. Yeah, sure, but I'm just saying. Yeah. It was the longest match. So, next match? Yeah. Tag uh, match. Big guy. The... And Bobby. Yeah, the uh, greatest Royal Rumble champion, Braun Strowman. And someone who might be in the Universal title picture in the near future, Bobby Lashley. Robert Lashley? Versus Defeated two Canadians. Two, that's what I was about to say. Two random Canadians they brought in <laughs> from Canada. Uh, Kevin Owens and... <laughs> they brought him from Canada. Probably. Sure. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, what, a, what a surprise. Uh, I like what they did with Owens and Zayn. They just kind of started pushing each other into the ring. Yeah, I mean... Like it was sacrificing each other back-to-back sort of thing. This match wasn't booked badly. No, it was okay. It wasn't the greatest ever wrestling match, but it was a spectacle. It had 
as you said, the whole play between Owens and Zayn. Yep, that was cool. They had the segments where Braun and Bobby were just working together, beating up people. Yeah. They were just brutalizing them too. Like Kevin Owens would dump Sammy in, and they'll just power slam Sammy, and then and they'll do the other way around. Yeah, he'll shove Owens in, and I'll power slam Owens. So, so they're just having each other destroy. This was, I mean, for this show, this was still one of the better segments. It was funny. Like, of course, Wasn't from that actual awesome like, match? from actual like technical wrestling segment, of course, no. Meltzer gave one point five. It's pretty low. I mean, but you know, it was a really at, good match. If you're looking at it for from a pure like a wrestling standpoint, Objectively, the wrestling match wasn't that. that, that seems about true. Fair, right? That seems fair, but from the actual like entertainment value, this one's this oh one yeah, that was it was that. all right. That's, that's true, but I don't think that's it really like what he two point five or something like that. That's really not what he takes into account. I think. Yeah. Too much. Even though he probably should, but you know, he's he's evaluated in wrestling matches, and it's uh, his just his personal opinion anyway. Yeah, of course. Like that's also one of those things. People take Meltzer's star ratings as like the word of God, basically, yeah. and it's just like it's just one dude who happens to know wrestling kind of well. Yeah, it's who the word of puts up star ratings. Exactly. Uh, uh, sorry, so like, that's not even an institution or anything. It's like no, it's that's just, just his thing. It just happens to be yeah. the most popular guy to do that type exactly. of thing. So last match on the card. Uh, <laughs> Why most, was this the main event? Because Roman Reigns. Like, for all intents and purposes, AJ Styles versus Shinsuke yeah. Nakamura should have been the main yeah, event. Absolutely. They could have had uh, Rollins and Miz close up the show with, the, with what they put on. As a matter of fact, um, they should have. Because the one argument for not putting AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura as the main event is because of the finish of the match. Yeah. Fair. You want to have a clean finish for your right. for your closing match. Rollins and Miz. Best, Rollins and Miz. Best match. It was the best match on the card. It was Great one of the longest matches best. on the card. Phase one. It had a clean finish. Happy crowd. Phase one. It was a title match. Yep. Perfect sense. Roman's, Roman Reigns and Samoa Joe. Because Roman needs to be victorious at the end of every show. Yeah. Golden rule. The golden rule of wrestling. So he beats Samoa Joe. So a Samoan named Joe defeats beat Samoa, Samoa Joe. Joe. Yeah. Uh, Want to guess the star rating of Meltzer? I, somewhere between one and two. Yeah. 1.5. Yeah. Spot on. Yeah, it was, it was a Roman. It was one of the Roman matches. One of those. Yeah, uh, nothing. Yeah, those just happened. Nothing too much to say about that. Let us know what you think about the uh, pay per view if you watched it in the comments and uh, how incredibly mediocre this was because it was. Yeah, this could have easily been an episode of Raw or SmackDown. That's what. That's exactly what you said. After this, this could have been a show on TV. Yeah, I mean, of course, bunch of by nature of it having titles from yeah. both shows. No, but like realistically. It this could have like been it. on one of the yeah. shows. You could know. have been a, a high-level regular show with the Rollins and Miz match as kind of the highlight of the day. Yeah, I mean, literally take that one match out, it's a normal show, and yeah. then put that on one of the other pay-per-views Basically. that not, does not have such an awesome match there. And then So done. probably they held the back on backlash a little bit because we had the Greatest Royal Rumble just a week beforehand. So Yeah, I feel like the Greatest Royal Rumble, I'm not sure how long that was planned. That seems like a thing that kind of came up. They already somewhat. announced it. They announced it at Mania already. Yeah, but I'm saying uh, a lot of like the pay per view schedules is basically a plan like at least yeah. a year in, in advance, and I'm not right. sure if the Gradual Rumble was necessarily in consideration oh, from that. the get go. It feels like some of the things that might have initially been intended to happen on Mania then happened there, and it maybe also took some steam off of Backlash. Yeah. Exactly. So, as great as the Gradual Rumble was. It might have messed a bit with the other pay-per-views around it. With this one specifically. Because it was a week after, so... Yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, uh, just to just to quickly announce that, uh, for months I've been saying that AJ Styles will retain his championship every single time, and you've been going against it every single time. And who's still the WWE champion? The same man who built the house he lives in. Well, for this pay per view, we both predicted wrong though, because you predicted AJ winning, yes. and Chinsky winning, right? But the point is, neither one won. But the point is retaining, right? He's still the champ, and I probably could have told you that at Mania that Styles would be the champ for a few more months, probably to summer time. Had to be AJ, so I I never doubted that AJ was going to lose clean. Not yet, not yet. Just wanted to point it out. Let us know what you think. 
half time show. Yeah. So what is it that we are doing? Um, it's a little game called Who Am I? We've played that before. Yes, we do. Also, also uh, we play that way too much. <laughs> in our free time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Want to go through the rules real quick? I mean, it's very simple. Each one of us has picked a character or entity or concept or whatever it gets after. the us. other person then is. Yeah. And so you have to ask questions about whom you are. Yes or no questions exclusively. Yes or no questions. If you get a yes, you can continue asking questions. If you get a no, the other person is... It's the other person's turn. Part of the thing is to find out who you are. And, of course, the goal is to find out who you are before the other person finds out who they are. So, typically, you would write notes and pin them to the other people's forehead, but we're not doing that because ain't nobody going to see it. So, we just keep it in our mind. Yeah. Uh, You have someone for me. I got someone for you. Yes. Do you want to begin asking questions? Yes, I do. Let's do it. Um, am I fictional? Yes. That that means that he's a fictional character now. Yes. Uh, that is what that means. Yeah. Am I from video games? Yes. Is one or more of those video games available on the Battle.net launcher? No, it's not. Huh. Intriguing. I, I wouldn't, know, wouldn't be aware of it being, but no, no, it definitely isn't. So, am I a fictional? Yes, you are. Am I from a video game? Yes, you are. See how creative we are? I'm going to ask you exactly a question. Battle.net. Yes. So, Blizzard. Yes. So, Hearthstone. You are in Hearthstone. I am in Hearthstone. So, I'm from the Warcraft universe. Yes. Which I knew before going into this. Yeah, that, that's a problem if we're having like a like a 10 minute discussion about the Warcraft universe. In, right in before advance. he notes down the character he's going to write yeah, down. Yeah, guess where my mind is. Because impressionable, right? So, I am from the Warcraft universe. Yes, you are. Uh, I'm just gonna go on onto this from Hearthstone because I don't know that much about the universe. Fair. So, am I a card, a playable card? Indirectly. Indirectly. What? This is. I'm not a play. I'm a playable card. A version of you is a playable card. Let's put that. Okay. Am I a hero? Yes. The, I, the problem is with one of those well, that's core a, that's heroes. Just, that's just a card. It's. Well, yeah, he's definitely a card. Yeah, but it's true. So I'm am I one of the nine? I'm one of the nine. I'm one of the uh, the um, alternate heroes from Frozen Throne. Yes. All right. Uh, I'm getting. I'm getting. As a matter of fact, to... I was intending for the original version, of course, which is why. Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the card is that one. So I'm getting pretty close to one rounding this year. Well, I mean, yeah, you. We're not messes up. You're limited to nine choices. Yeah. At this point. Am I male? Yes. All right. So, and I'm down to what? Like, seven? I was about to say seven, I believe, yeah. Yeah, it's not, not even that good. It's just Jane and Valera, right? Am, They're female. Am I uh, a part of the grimy goons of Gadgets, Sam? First of all, I'm pretty sure that's not exactly what they call, and second of all, no. From the Gadgets expansion. Okay, bad. I'm getting close, though, so you're dirt. Oh, yeah, right, because it's the only group that has three male yep. characters. Got it, exactly. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um... Okay, so is this game that I'm from available on Steam? Yes, it is. Kind of figure. Mm-hmm. There would have been very few games that are available on either. Um, have we played the game on the channel before? We have, which is why I'm plugging the game. Uh, and I'm putting up a link to this right now. <laughs> yes, I am, of course. Possibly. <laughs> if I remember to. All right. um, Probably not right now, but in the description. Or are you doing the uh, notification? Info cards. Oh, okay. They're okay. fancy. I like them. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so we have played that game. Yeah. We have. Yeah. Have we played five or more episodes of that game on the show? Yeah, that is what we have done. Okay. <laughs> have we played that game? No, I mean, I'm not going to say if we, have we played on primarily on Mondays because some of those we haven't. But like, is it one of those story-based games? Yes, it is. Is it by Telltale Games? No, it's not. That pretty much tells me exactly which, <laughs> what game it is. Which right. one game I'm it is. I'm still thinking I'm winning this, though. Because I'm pretty close there. So, there's four people left. Yes, and if you want to go with the groups again, you have a 50-50 shot. That is correct. You could go by race, potentially, then again. Let me go by, is my skin green? No. All right. Wait, so... There's, there's two people left now. Wait, we were 
having... There's just Anduin and, and Gul'dan left. Um, so... <laughs> um, so I'm from Life is Strange. Yes, you are. And I assume I'm from the original game. Yes, indeed. Because we played five or more episodes of it, we only played four of Before the Storm. Um, Okay. Is Malfurion green? We'll get to that. We'll we'll get to there. Um, Don't face Druids anymore these days. So, let's go with the statistically more likely option. Am I female? Yes. I would have preferred if I wasn't because I... Would, would, have, yeah. would limit the options more, but um, am I one of the main characters? Uh, n- I wouldn't call you no. 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 Okay. So, I'm not sure. Am I? A- am I from the Cabal? No, you're not. All right. So he isn't green. <laughs> no, he's pink. Is he? It was that way. Is he's pink and his hair is green. Yeah, that, that's how it was. All right. Cool. <laughs> cool. All right. Yeah, yeah it's fair. I was like, "Huh? He's." <laughs> I should. Yeah. yeah. He said, well, I thought he was green. That's interesting. Yeah. Because um, he's a druid, like he should be green. Should be covered in moss. Both druid characters are uh, the night elf. Yeah, pink. they should be covered in moss. Um. So, female side character from the original game. Yes. If you don't get it this round, I'm winning the game. Do I go to Blackwell Academy? You do attend Blackwell Academy. Uh, I'm a student there, I assume. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you never know. Yeah, cool. Uh, when I'm saying you're attended, then... Yeah, yeah. fair. Uh, so, let's see. Am I that one girl that we always save from totally average danger? God damn it. But I need a name. Oh, God. God damn it. I'm Melfurin, by the way. Just yes, you are. Out of the way. Uh, Alyssa? Alyssa. Yeah. Hey, we got it. So that's how the game works. Go, go out and play that with your friends and your peers and your cats. And report back. Pro- Re- preferably bring some tape because those sticky notes aren't always sticky. Sticky notes enough. don't stick to foreheads. Not that well, at least. Not at 2 a.m. When you've been sitting in a small yeah. basement where you've also had... Uh, been barbecuing food with a rather high uh, concentration of fats for about five hours. The more you know. Yeah. Uh, talking about the more you know, facts of the week are coming Facts out. of the week. Uh, do you want me to start? Do you want to start? Sure, you start. Uh, you know that fact already because it was too good to not, to not show you for even one day until we recorded this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> a New England zoo has named a goat... A goat after Nick Foles. That's wonderful. Yeah, so in there's many, ways. many things that are great about it. First of all, it being New England. Yes. And, and second of all, it being a goat. By the name of Nick Foles, it's awesome. It's so good. <laughs> it's wonderful irony. What's <sighs> that? Love it. Love it. It's great. Let's see. What is my favorite? Pull out his notepad. Because I have really bad memory. Too professional. Yes. Um, so. You also put Mel Furin for me before. Most certainly at some point. Sure, probably. Very certainly. There are repeats happening all over. Uh, so, you know how we sometimes do those Hearthstone keyboard quizzes? Correct. You you know how many cards come up when you type in quest? Quest. Yes. Uh, you'd assume the quests? Yes, indeed. Uh... So that's nine at least? Yes. And uh, is there's also neutral cards? So Well, there's a questing adventurer. Exactly. Uh, so the answer is ten. That's all. One, one for each class, which is just exactly the quest. The quest. And then one neutral one, which is the questing adventurer. Yeah. So that's there's one quest yeah. card for each category there. That kind of zone, alright. Yeah, that's <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't come up with anything better. Weak sauce. Uh, but, as we're on the point of Hearthstone already, or uh, yeah. the extent of what you wanted to talk, or we wanted to talk about, uh, was, first of all, ideas we had for Hearthstone and Warcraft stuff in general. Because you know a lot about that, and I don't... Well, not that much yet, but I want to. So, so that's a good point. for the Hearthstone ideas, right? Yeah, yeah. I actually 
today had this idea and I was gonna suggest talking about that as a, as a topic and then you also suggested talk about that so you know um, I actually had a an idea for a very specific archetype right. that doesn't really exist right now and that I have um, maybe a bit of an unusual idea on how you could achieve that free shaman oh god uh, <laughs> it's actually control hunter it's control hunter is it does it involve the death stalker not necessarily. I mean, the idea is less of a build a deck with currently existing cards and more of a what kind of cards could you produce oh, okay. to make that a possible yeah. archetype. So, have you heard of the uh, Steam Weedle Sniper, I believe he's called? I don't think so. Um, his whole shtick is that his... He's already in the game? Yeah, he he's from the uh, Governors vs. Normal oh, expansion. Okay. Uh and his card text reads, basically, your hero power can target anything. Oh, okay. Oh. That's not exactly what, but you know. Yeah, you that's, get so that's pretty good. And that allows you, of course, to target minions with your hero power. Yeah, which is tough. And that is the only thing that really manipulates the actual way the hero power works right. that I know of. And I was thinking... Aside from Baku again now. Yeah, of course, so. but they don't really change how it works. It just no. changes the numbers. Yeah. Um, so my idea was to... Build on that for, like, a control hunter. For example, like, a card that, if it didn't already exist, would totally call Hunter's Mark, uh, yeah. that basically says something like, oh, yeah, uh, choose choose a minion, that minion is now targeted by your hero power. So instead of hitting face, you're hitting that minion whenever you use your hero power. Until it dies. Until it dies, yeah. All right. And then maybe some other stuff where it's like, oh, yeah, this turn your hero power can target anything. This turn your hero power... Okay. You know, so it's just use the powerful hero power to. So yeah, the hero power is just when it can target something except for face. It's basically a strictly better mage. All right. And I think by specifically making cards that let it target something else, not necessarily as the sniper where it's just like, oh yeah, you, you can now target anything, but you know, specifically a spell that makes it target a specific minion yeah. or something like that could potentially make a very interesting way to play control with a hunter because of course you can try to do the same stuff that you do with every other class yeah. like oh yeah put up taunts right. trade effect efficiently but like specifically a control th- themed hunter control hunter is tough because you'd also need more removal stuff and probably more draw yeah but ex- uh, so the removal would be kind of fixed by by way of Adapting a hero power yeah. to be able to remove things. But a bit of AoE removal can, can hurt. True. That could also be one of those where it's like, oh yeah, like um, could be the next power. time you use a hero power, it targets every enemy or something like that. That would be which, great. Which would then be interesting because there's still, um, you could still have the upgrade to hero power. Oh, right. Or, uh, well, yeah. I think there is also, Do well, four? there is a... There's a mage card which just is like, oh yeah, your hero power deals one more damage. Yeah. So there's definitely like, right. if you instead of saying deal two damage to everything, you're saying use your hero power on everything. That of course if, um, can then be affected by other stuff. If your deck has neither odd nor even cards, your hero power deals eight and can target everybody. Exactly. That's that's how that should work. No, no, it's just like if your deck only contains zero cost minions. Oh man! And then you're just filling up your deck with snow flippers and such. But we need more than that. yeah. Of that's not enough. I think we could do like. H- how about an entire expansion themed only about zero cost minions? Oh man, I like that. <laughs> I love that. And then if your if your if your deck has no minions that cost mana, <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty cool. You know, just spam them out. Like a like that would that would also be cool. Like have like a card that fills your board with zero cost minions. Yeah, I mean, like like the wisp thing. Yeah, I was about to say it's it's basically just essentially that. that. But then it could also be Morlocks or beasts, which you then can buff up. Yeah, that's true. Maybe that's an idea of just running. That's also a challenge we should do at some point. Just running nothing but zero mana minions, and other than that, only spells. Oh, oh yeah. So you can't run minions that cost mana, basically. It's a restriction. Yeah, but at that point, you can just build a spell hunter. Yeah. And then start building beasts. Yeah, because spell hunter is just... It's a valid archetype. Yeah, it's it's a, not right. that great these days, but... 
It's a valid deck. Maybe then we can also ban the uh, minions that cost more than uh, one that are summoned directly by spell. So Animal Companion Oh, out. yeah. Uh, Spellstone is out. Sort of thing. So that would kind of be a control hunter if it just uh, knock stuff in there that's like um, Kill Commands, Deadly Shots. It's probably like Bows and the Rexar. That would be kind of tough. Yeah, Rock the Lar. Yeah. Which, yeah, that's actually pretty good. You can't even unleash, though. Yeah, because they cost one. Yeah, oh, so that would be rough. There's a dog pond somewhere in there. Rough? It, rough it's, dog? It's, it's a sound that dogs make. Rough. The, 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 the rough, wow. rough, the marking here. Yeah. Wow. That's rough, rough, rough. Again. Yeah. Depending on how many enemy minions there are, that's how rough that will be. <laughs> exactly. That should also be in. They should just be in at least the snow flippers. Oh. At least the penguins. Which is just like unleash the hounds, but they don't have charge. No, they have charge. They should have charge. Oh, so it's it's just unleash the, the hounds. It's the same, but it's penguins. But it's snow flipper penguins. Like, what are you be more afraid of? Someone unleashing six hounds at you or six penguins at you? Hounds, yeah, definitely hounds. Oh, probably, yeah. But like, <laughs> what would you be more surprised by? <laughs> penguins. Ex- Exactly. So, I mean, isn't that all that really matters in battle? No, but it it can be helpful, yeah. I'm surprised if, if your opponent doesn't know what to do. Yeah, that's why the Romans had elephants. Exactly. Like, what do you do against those? Uh, so you want to talk some Warcraft? Sure, what do you want to talk about? Uh, um, what, what we were talking about before, the thing was like the whole creation. The whole creation stuff of how stuff came to be. Uh, like oh, Titans and Void Lords and shit. Yeah. That's, that's about that's about where I got. And then Titans built no, no the Void Lords built old gods. And old gods started taking over stuff. Yeah, I that's a problem because right now we're going in one of those areas where I'm not particularly knowledgeable about. So um so in the beginning there was uh light and yeah, then, yeah. then there was exactly. void. And out of that beca- became the Void Lords and the Naru. Yeah. Which the Void Lords are the Void people, of course. The Naru, and the Naru are like the light people. Just light people. Yeah. They have like yeah. weird shapes, but it's basically... Uh, um, and then I think out of mixing of Void and Light became basically the normal world. Oh, yeah. Which is, you know, where then yeah. stuff happens. The Void Lords created uh, the Old Gods... Right. The old gods start infesting uh, planets. Some planets have titan souls, which I'm not entirely certain. Like, would have several planets, or was it just Azeroth? No, yeah. there there is a bunch of planets out there, and um, no, no, with, that was that had old gods in them. Yeah, there 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 is multiple ones that were infected by old gods. So there's so, more than those four. Yeah. Okay. Uh, those four, I believe, it's actually five. Uh, are on Azeroth. I think there's only four confirmed ones is what I heard. Yeah, but I, I think there's always talk of like, oh yeah, five ones, but I think there's only four that are confirmed by name. Okay. Um, so, the old gods start affecting planets, the ti- the titans don't want uh, planets with titan souls to be infected. Right. Because that's the whole shit that the old gods are trying to do, like, uh, basically create a corrupted titan. Yeah. So, um... Then Sargeras, who is basically like the fighter of the uh, Titans. The like champion their, their, type of, their type of yeah. champion, yeah. Uh, so he goes around trying to stop the old gods, and he sees a planet that's like completely infected by them. Azra. Uh no. Not Azra? It's it's another it's another planet. Alright, there's another one that he then destroyed. That like where like the Titans the yeah. Titan Soul was already the world soul not Titan Soul, the World Soul, sorry, yeah. that's what they call it. Is completely corrupted and beyond redemption. Yeah, and he just destroys the planet. Exactly. In, f- in uh, doing so, killing an yeah. unborn titan and everything else on there. And the other titans who didn't have the scope of what the mm-hmm. ogres were doing. So were like, just, were come just on, like, man! You you can't do that. Yeah, can't do and it. So they kicked him out, and he was like, F this. "I have to, st- I have to stop the old gods yeah. somehow," and. The best way to do that is by, by just killing everything. Right. And then he formed the Burning Legion. I've heard of that. How did Jaraxxus came to be? I don't actually know anything about Jaraxxus specifically, but the Eridar uh, joined the Burning Legion. Right. 
after Sargeras came to their home planet, Argus, and um, he basically asked the three leaders of them to One of join which him. is Prophet Valor. Yeah, it's Valon, it's Archimond, and Kil'jaeden. Right. And... I've heard that story. Yeah, and then um, Valon was like... He, uh, he, had a, he had a vision that basically was like, oh yeah, don't do this. He was meditating with some sort of crystal. Yeah, and... Um, AKA doing math. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and the other two were like, oh yeah, we're doing this. So, yeah. so Valon and his people left, and actually um, later landed on Draenor. Right. Uh, they had a few stops in yeah. between, but that's where they ended up. And then um, Archimonde and Kil'jaeden became Sargeras' lieutenants. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've heard of that. And so... They Dra- started waging wars. So Drex is, is an Eredar. Yeah. And he's a part of the Burning Legion, obviously. Yeah. And that's pretty much all I know about him. All right. I'm, I'm not yeah. entirely sure if he's actually in the in the actual Warcraft universe, but I think he is. Would make sense. He was a an original legend in Hearthstone, wasn't he? Yes. Um. So it would make sense. Uh, how is Gul'dan involved if he is? So, uh, Gul'dan, of course, is an orc. All right. And when the so I t- I told you how the Eredar or well. Specifically, the Eredar outcasts that, that didn't join the Burning Legion, who would then yeah. be called the Drenai, which Those means plan, outcast right? in their language. Wow. Um, Social Drenai. Or something along those lines. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm not sure if it was, I mean, it was something along those lines, definitely. Um, so they basically were fleeing from planet to planet, and whenever. I think. I think it was Kil'jaeden specifically wanted to stop them. Because it was like, oh yeah, you left us. Yeah, yeah. I want to kill you now. Makes so, sense. So, he was always trying to destroy them, but they were always one step ahead of him. Mm-hmm. So instead of openly attacking them, he decided to go a bit more subtle about it. So when they were on Draenor, he tried influencing the orcs into waging war on the Draenei. Alright. And did they? So... Then, um, he threw Gul'dan, who basically helped him, because he was a power-hungry son of a bitch. Uh, who helped whom? The, uh, Sargeras? Gul'dan helped to kill Jaden. Okay. Um, so, then, they, that led to the orcs drinking the blood of Manoroth. Manoroth being a pit fiend, which is a type of demon. Yeah. And then going berserk, basically. Nice. And, you know, start killing Everything. pretty much anything. Um, so what what happened to Valon in the end? I believe he's still around. Did he do good? He still is around? Yeah. Like, how long do those folks live? Uh, yeah, they live pretty long. Well, right. Um, so I know that Valon was definitely around in Legion. I'm not sure if he survived that whole ordeal because I'm not that yeah. caught up on the lore um there's new stuff happening too right every like whatever World of Warcraft expansion drops. yeah so uh Legion was the okay now I'm not entirely certain uh so the most recently announced expansion is Battle for Azeroth alright I'm not sure if that's already out I don't think so but I'm not sure not sure um and Legion was the one before that alright do you play World of Warcraft no alright <laughs> You just read stuff? Yeah. Right. I, uh, yeah, I read stuff and I mostly watch videos, you yeah. know. Yeah, right. Gotta start doing more of that as well. Because the lore is really interesting. It's true. It's like studying studying history. But yeah, a bit except more, that it's interesting. But a bit more crazy. Uh, I also uh, heard so- read something about the Lich King stuff. So Arthas apparently Arthas is the uh, the paladin guy, right? Yes. Who then became the Lich King? Yes. Uh, because he was a weird guy, and obsessed with power or something. Was it that? So originally, the Lich King also is another part of the Burning Legion. Okay. Um, Lich King with the Burning Legion? Not he's not directly. Uh, I thought it was a whole with him, but like undead scourge type of thing. Yeah. So. <laughs> They basically just created... I believe they created the Lich King to try to help them to basically just kill things on Azeroth. Right. Um, the original Lich King was Ner'zhul, who was an orc, 
And his right. spirit was just bound to the armor, and I believe okay. to the sword too. Frostmourne being yeah. the sword. Um, and then Nerzul recruited Arthas by sending Frostmourne to him. Right. And then Arthas picked up Frostmourne and basically was slowly corrupted and became a death knight. Oh, okay. And then later, uh, when he was at uh, the Frozen Throne, he then like put on the armor and became the new yeah, king. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I heard. And then later, the heroes, of course, killed him. And then uh, Bolvar Fordrang. That guy? Uh, took his place because there must always be a Lich King. There's also a Lich King? Uh, yes, he is the most recent Lich King. Okay. But he's he's a good guy. So okay. basically the idea is that the Lich King is controlling a bunch of undead. Yes. And if there was no Lich King, the undead would just basically behave like animals and start attacking people. Oh. But if and there's a bad about- Lich King, he'll make him do it anyway. Yeah, but so if there's an evil Lich King, there'll be an organized army. Right. If there is no Lich King, they'll just be acting on their own. Yeah. And they're not very intelligent. If there is a good Lich King, he'll just keep him in check. Okay. So, basically, their whole thing was like, we can't just have them run around. Yeah, so we gotta have a Lich King. So, we gotta keep him in check, and Bolvar was already injured from battle, so it was like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. The uh, Hearthstone card Lich King, is that the good Lich King or the bad Lich King? Uh, the Hearthstone Lich King actually is Arthas. Okay. So, that's uh, why it gives you Arthas when you beat him. With every class. Correct. When you beat the Lich King with every class, you gain Arthas as a hero. Oh, yeah, Arthas as a hero, yeah. Yeah, I, I was, yeah exactly. Um, so, there's actually also the uh, Bolvar Fireblood card. Yes. Which depicts him pretty much right before he uh, the becomes the right Lich King. Because, the divine shield. Because he already is uh, kind of fucked up. Yeah. So, that's like pretty much right before he okay. becomes the Lich King. What else is there on Azeroth? Like, important stuff. That's humans live, right? Uh, yeah, Azeroth is the main place where everything takes place. So who, who, what other races are there? Or live there? Uh, native to Azeroth would be the trolls, the humans, the dwarves, the, both types of elves. Not the orcs though, right? No, the orcs are from Draenor. Right. Uh, which is connected to Azeroth through a portal. Right. I've heard of that. That's how the war happened. Later, someone tried to open more portals, which is how Draenor became all kinds of fucked up, and it's now called Outland. It's called Outland? Yeah. Alright. I know, I heard about the first war, when uh, Medivh opened the, the, the portal exactly. on the, the side of Azeroth. Yeah, exactly. And, and Gul- then they... Gul'dan opened it on the other side. Okay, and then just ran over Stormwind. Yeah, the orcs uh, came out. I believe at that time they were more or less alone. Not right. sure if the ogres were on the side yet, but the horde, as it is known today, didn't exist then. What's a horde? Uh, so have you heard of the alliance? Uh, kind of, sorta. The word, yeah. Uh, so that those are basically the two big factions in the Warcraft universe. Right. The alliance is like humans and night elves okay. and dwarves. So the good, and the, the good guys. Yeah, and uh, the horde is. Orcs, ogres, right. trolls, uh, blood elves. Uh, they are, in the first two Warcraft games, they are kind of the bad guys. Right. Well, in the first Warcraft game is mostly orcs. Later, in yeah. the second game, it's the actual horde, more or less as we know it today. Um, later, in World of Warcraft, when bigger threats started rising, right. they kind of were like, okay, yeah, we kind of both don't want the world to be all kinds of fucked up, mm-hmm. so... We'll join forces against stuff like the Burning Legion. Okay. So they've been friendly for the most time. And now that they... After they defeated the Legion in Legion... Wow. Uh, they are now fighting against each other again. Makes sense. In Battle for Azeroth. So that's kind of what the what the whole thing is about. Like, the, the Warcraft stuff is about those two factions? Yeah. Most of it is about those two. The first Warcraft game doesn't really have that too much. It's just Orcs versus Humans. Right. I'm gonna think, I believe the game is called... Where are Warcraft orcs and humans? Where are the dragons from? Uh, the dragons, the ones we know, definitely are from Azeroth. All right. But I believe there might have also been dragons on other planets. Did they just show up? Um, I'm not sure how they originally came to be, but I know that there were the proto dragons. Yes. And there was this one big proto dragon who basically ate other proto dragons to become even bigger. Who was that? Um, I don't remember his name, but he's not important today anymore. Not so in Hearthstone? He's not in Hearthstone. Okay. And 
five dragons basically band together to defeat him. Yeah. Who would later become the dragon aspects thanks to powers they got from the titans who basically helped them defeat right, him. Right, I heard of that. And the uh, dragon aspects, of course, are Alexstrasza, Malago, Snow's Dormu, Isera, and Deathwing. Right. Who back then was Naltharion. Um, Deathwing then later became corrupted by the old gods because every dragon aspect got, like, one area that they were now basically... Right. And he was in the Earth. Controlling or overseeing or whatever. Right. And exactly, his thing was Earth, and the old gods were trapped so under the Earth, they so get to him. he was the easiest one for them to influence, yeah. that's how he became evil, then later, for some reason, they created the Dragon Soul, All right. which you know as the priest weapon, Yep. Uh, so it was just like a stone or something like that, and they each impart, they each uh, put a part of their power in the dragon soul of all the of all the dragons. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Deathwing too. So Deathwing didn't, but he basically I think he was actually the one who came up with it. He was like, "Oh yeah, we uh, need this as a strong weapon." Yada yada yada. So right. yeah, everyone put a part of the power in yeah. it, and he was like, "Ha, tricked you! It's mine now." Oh, okay. That, uh, that's clever. That's clever. The dragon soul actually later become known as the demon soul as well for some reason. Uh-huh. So, that also is a reason why Deathwing is the strongest of the dragon aspects now. Okay. Although, also somewhat recently, I believe, the dragon aspects actually relinquished most of their powers anyways. Even Deathwing? Um, I don't think so, no. Because I'm he's a bad not, guy still, right? Yeah, Deathwing is a bad guy. I'm not even sure if he's still around. Why wouldn't he be? You know, adventurers kill bad guys a lot. But Deathwing? They killed Ragnaros. Oh yeah, about Ragnaros, he was an elemental lord, right? Yes, there is... Also from Azeroth? Uh, yes, the elemental... So, in, on Azeroth, before the Titans came to it and, and ordered it... Yeah. It's called the Ordering of Azeroth. Um, there was basically just elementals fighting each other. No humans? Um, <laughs> no, it, it, at first it was just elementals. All right. And then they... Uh, Basically, were like, oh yeah, we don't want to have this, so they basically put the elementals in their own little plane of existence, mm-hmm. uh, which is where the ele- elemental planes come from, and then they basically created creatures that would then uh, be on Azeroth, so yeah. that's where um, a lot of those creatures were made of stone, but then later the right. old gods did a thing called the Curse of Flesh. That's a toll view, right? Yeah, but also yeah. the Earthern and the, and certain types of Trogs. Yeah. And then there was the uh, Curse of Flesh, which turned some yeah. of those creatures into flesh, so the Earthern became known as dwarves. Right. Uh, some Tolvir became made of flesh later. But some As, well, as did the Trogs. I believe there are still both types of Trogs around. Mm. There's still t- both types of Tolvir around. I'm not sure if there's still Earthern around. Um, like, I'm, typically it's considered the evil curse thing when it turns regular people into stone. But in this case, it's the other way around. Yeah, like uh, the Gorgons from uh, Greek mythology. Yeah. The stuff is just the other because way Because the idea is that beings of flesh are easier to manipulate for the old gods yeah. than beings of stone. Makes sense. So they were like, okay, we'll just turn you into flesh so we can manipulate you more easily. That's because wrong. apparently they can do that. And they can't kill the old gods at all. Well, so... The old gods infected Azeroth, right. as you know, and the Titans killed one of the old gods. I've known that, yes, Rosh, but they ripped them off. Like, they, they just took them straight out of the planet. Yeah, and that damaged the world soul. Yeah. So they were like, okay, we can't do that for the others. So they can, just, it just not kill, can it just not remove them, or can it not even kill them? Not entirely sure how it works, but the point is they just then imprisoned them, so as yeah, to be like, oh yeah, they can't influence shit mm-hmm. no more, of course. Yeah. They inevitably ended up doing it. Adventurers did Cthi- uh, did defeat Cthune in uh, World of Warcraft. Right. But I'm not sure if they actually properly killed him or if it's just like, oh yeah, he's out of the picture for a bit. Right. Again, I'm by no means an expert on this. Okay. So, you know, let's cut it here about this. Yeah. We can totally talk about that more in another podcast, though. Because apparently there's a lot of stuff there. There's still, like, uh, 
stuff that you pick up on uh, on the side when someone's talking about stuff is like that that happened and that like the Minari. That's that's a bunch of people. Yes. Something like that. So we can still do that more often in uh in future podcasts. Uh we do, however, have to leave the people on a high note. And a bad musical pun. Which is the song of the week. And I know it by heart, by the way, which is your song of the week. My song of the week is actually um by a band that you might have heard of. They're from Sweden. Uh yes. I think I might have heard of that band. It would be ABBA. No, actually, it's Hammerfall. It's I was totally just tricking okay, you. Okay, sure. Um, They're from Sweden? I believe so, yeah. Right. Um, and, you know what, let, let's go into story time for a second here. Um, oh, Christ. So, you know how Joe always listens to CDs in, in his I car? I know our pal Joe always listens to CDs in his car. So, he was... typically also ACDC. Yeah, so he... He's a sucker for that. He, he was like, he was taking out one of the CDs and he was like, oh yeah, pick the next one. Mm-hmm. And it was like, one by like a country band that I'm not that big on. And then it's there fair. was, then it was one CD by Hammerfall. So I was like... Really? He had one of those? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the other threshold, just if anyone cares. Nah. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'll take that one. Yeah. Uh, so that made me actually look into Hammerfall a bit more because I had only two songs by theirs, one of which is a cover song. Yep. So I was like, you know, let's look into <laughs> that a bit probably more. probably the best one. And, um... I like their music overall. Yeah. Um, and so I picked one of their songs, as a matter of fact, from that album. And it is The Fire Burns Forever. The Fire Burns Forever. By yes. Hammerfall. Is it metal? Yes, it's metal. All their music is metal. Yeah. And also I finally figured out why I like certain metal songs and why I don't like certain other metal songs. And why is that? Because metal, as most music genres do, has subgenres. Well, obviously. And, um, you know how a lot of metal has, like, that screaming and shit? Yeah, right. Like, That's awful. I don't like that. No. So, um, turns out that, as far as I'm aware, my favorite uh, subgenre of metal is power metal. Power metal. Yeah. Like, no one... Like, that's the last word in the English language that, that would come to mind when looking at you. Power metal. In general. That's... I believe that's two words, but sure. Just this the last phrase. Just in, like, <laughs> in general. But cool. Uh, my song of yeah. the week is the exact opposite of everything that you just said. So it's folk music? Mm, somewhat. It's, it's, okay, yeah. Somewhat similar. It's like, it's a bit softer. It's, I think, I don't know if it's classified as pop or whatever. It's, uh, it's Honesty by Billy Joel. I'm not even sure if you know that song. I don't think I do. It's pretty good. Uh, you gotta listen to that. Uh, I might show it to you. I might put it in the Music Share playlist. By the way, there is also a Music Share playlist for the community. Link in the description. Which to remember is to y'all. Place. So that's where you can share your song of the week with us. Just drop in the link. Drop a link in there. Uh, we'll listen to them. Uh, evaluate them, and if they're really good, we'll shout them out. Yeah, yeah, we'll do, we'll do that. So uh, thank you for listening to the podcast. Um, opinions on anything is appreciated. Some Hearthstone stuff, Warcraft lore. Just drop them in there. Uh, wrestling, anything. Good ideas for who am I? We'll use them on our pals. Uh, yeah, exactly. Anything, because we can't really use them on the podcast after you suggest right. them in the comments anything because we can both come, read the comments. Anything you can come up with, just drop it in. There's a lot of space down there. Leave a like on the video and subscribe to not miss our other stuff, JJ. That's it? That's it.